welcome to Fantasy Sports Addicts Anonymous. Woo! This is our first podcast. Alrighty! We're very excited. My name is Tom. Hi, Tom. I'm a fantasy sports addict. And my name is Ryan. Hi, Ryan. And I'm also a fantasy sports addict. Well, that's terrific. We have spent the bulk of the last, what, uh, four months, three months, nothing but baseball. And, uh, you know, it's it's been an interesting season. A lot more uh, power than maybe we expected to see. A lot of, a lot of good pitching, a lot of strikeouts, and... Don't forget the prospects! Woo! Hey! Hi! Yes, obviously, if you've been following us any time now, you know how much we love our hype. And our prospects. And uh, this has been the summer of prospects, so... Um, yeah, this isn't really what we're talking about today, though. We're talking about... We're going to do another list, because this is that time of year. It's July. It's All-Star break. Today is, in fact, the All-Star game. Uh, but Go National League! Okay. It's at, but it, this is that low time of the year, July. There's not much happening sports-wise. No, there's really not. Like, you know, the NFL is basically don't get arrested. Like stay out of jail mode, right? Don't blow off your fingers with firecrackers or oh. do stupid shit like that. No, that's, ooh. Yeah, how did that happen, by the way? Two, two players. They weren't Eagle Scouts, I don't know. I mean, yeah, light and throw, light and throw, kids. Jeez. But, so, yeah, we're gonna do another list. We're gonna talk about uh, our fantasy, I guess we should preface this, fantasy all-star team. Uh, we come up with a consensus list, and um, yeah, see if you agree, disagree, it's pretty obvious. I mean, there's a lot of choices that really, uh, hello, not much question to, but... And this has nothing to do with return on investment, you know, like, oh, so-and-so is a draft still, like, he was a better pick than, you know, first-round pick. It's just, who was the best player at any given position for your fantasy roster? And you obviously aren't going to have all of these players at once. It's if you impossible. are, find a different league, because it's bullshit. That's sad, yeah. Okay, so, let's just start it off. Um, you know, pretty important position, the catcher position. This one should be fairly plainly obvious, Buster Posey. Uh, I mean, again, for years now, he's been the, the guy to have if you are going to pay for a catcher, which really most people don't because there's only one to pay for. And that would be Buster Posey, and he's having a Buster Posey type year, you know. Runner up for our, our choice here might have been Stephen Vogt. Again, this is also about the return on investment, where if you completely punted the catching category, you were able to get them pretty much with your last pick because everybody in the league already had their catcher by this point. Right. I mean, thankfully, I think I have him in four of my six leagues. He was kind of my sleeper pick going into the year. I've been loving it. Okay. Well... Moving along, first base. First base, uh, this is actually probably my MVP pick of the first part of the season. Right. And, come on, Goldie. Paul Goldschmidt. Gotta love Goldie. Oh, yeah, we love some Goldie. I mean, who would have thought that he would have been stealing bases as well? What? How many does he have now? Is it 11? At least. I know he's in double digits. I thought he was up 16, but... Wow. He, it's up there. So lot... the batting average... Awesome power and stolen bases. Really, you can't ask for more out of a first baseman. No, definitely not. So, second base. That's that's a position where you ask for speedy. You want to be speedy. You Woo, got, yeah. Hopefully you got speed D Gordon. I, I love D Gordon. And I love being able to get stolen bases out of my middle infield because, let's face it, there's not too many power hitting middle infielders. And it's also a pretty thin position as it is. Right. So if you can stack a certain category or statistic, mainly stolen base stolen and batting average, that's a plus. So Hard to you do know, both. Jose Tuve is also great, but you know, D Gordon, that's my name. Must own. Must own. Uh, third base. This one normally would have been obvious. Miguel Cabrera, you know, triple crown winner, you know top three pick in fantasy like you set your clock to Miggy and forget about it but 
Then again, he got injured trying to steal a base for whatever godly reason he was trying to do it. I think he's trying to keep up with Paul Goldschmidt somehow. But whatever, it didn't work. He's injured. He's out for six to eight weeks. So we had to put in a replacement third baseman. Okay. And we went with Josh Donaldson. That's a pretty spectacular choice. I mean, he was in the home run derby last night. So that's... And the numbers are there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what Oakland was doing trading him. You know, it seemed like they got pennies on the dollar for what he's actually giving you. And, you know, fantasy owners as well. They got to be happy. They got him when they did. Like, he wasn't a cheap pick by any means, but he wasn't the one of the top third basemen, even right. though he's been playing like one. Okay. Now, shortstop is a position we disagreed on a little bit. Uh, but statistically speaking, uh, we're going to say statistically speaking and positionally speaking, Hanley Ramirez is the best option you can get at shortstop, even though he no longer plays shortstop. Kind of a technicality. I'm not a big fan of this, <clears throat> but he still qualifies at the shortstop position. And as good as Tulo has been recently, uh, really... Hanley Ramirez has been the superior shortstop option thus far this year. Granted, a lot of Hanley Ramirez stats came really early in the year. Like, he was knocking the cover off the ball in spring training, and that covered for the first few weeks of the year. Right. But if you're playing in a roto league, like, that doesn't matter. None of that matters, yeah. Head-to-head's a little different. Um, but if we were going on... Going forward. ...rest of the season... I've been buying Carlos Correa all day, like CC, like. But that's not the point of this, though, because no. the All Star is what you've done, and we're celebrating that in the midway point. So hand ram is a choice. So I think I think next year though we'll probably be talking Correa. Absolutely. Okay, so this outfield situation. This... Easy, like one two, like just gonna say them both right off the bat. You got Harper and you got Trout. Like these guys are. Locked in, all-star, fantasy all-star, MVP candidates for the next 10, 10 years. to 15 years, you know, hopefully. Right, right now they're tied, 26 home runs. It's really exciting. We're these, both These guys owners. are the face of baseball. Yes, they are. And they're the face of our dynasty teams. I'm, I'm just excited about that, aren't you? We finally have a nice competition, a friendly, whose guy is better, Trout versus Harper. Harper! Trout! Woo! Woo All right, so that's two-thirds of your outfield. You got... Oh, and again, this is a three-outfield slot. We're not necessarily designating left, center, right. Uh, but So your third outfielder you're going to probably expect to see here would be Mike Stanton, Giancarlo Stanton. Uh, but he falls into the Miguel Cabrera category, injured at the decision-making time. So we're going to fill in with Detroit's outfielder jd martinez can't um, argue with that no he has been spectacular this year especially and this this is probably a return on investment guy too oh absolutely like uh you could have got him for real real cheap like he's really undervalued player and i i think going forward next year you're gonna see him ranked a hell of a lot higher well deservedly so as long as he keeps it up uh all right so let's you got to have a few utility spots here. You got to have a few bench type guys. We're not doing an actual bench. We'll just call them utility guys. Right, because again, we're <laughs> kind of going off of the Yahoo Public League standard rosters. But I think all the fantasy sports sites, you you have at least one, maybe two utility slides. Right. And so our first utility guy, we're going. Macho, macho man. All right, Ryan. This is Ryan's guy, I macho man. I love me some macho man, Manny right. Mikado. Okay, so he loves his macho man. I I went with another third baseman. Now, see, all right, we left Todd Frazier off this list, and we're sorry to any of the Cincinnati Reds fans out there, Swope, anybody else. Uh, and he did win the Derby last night. That was impressive. New Derby was real fun. Nice new rules. That was cool. We had fun with that. Um, but my choice, Colorado's third baseman, Nolan Arenado. I mean, this guy is just, he, wow. 
I mean, he is the future of everything in Colorado, and he is something special, and I wish I had some kind of dynasty ownership. I have no investments, and I mean, you just, like, you name your kids after this guy. See, this is also another point where we kind of went back and forth, where I was fighting for Todd Frazier, like, I don't actually own him anywhere, just because, you know, he still went early, and where I was drafting, I was taking other people. But, you know, looking at the overall numbers so far, like, you got to give it to Frazier. But, at the same time, Nolan Arenado was injured for the beginning part of it. So, his numbers are literally one or two stops below while missing a couple weeks of playing time. Right. So, for that regard, we went with Nolan Arenado. Right. All right, so pitching, this is a... We did... We have to get a little crafty here. I mean, we both had... Certain choices we wanted and we didn't want, and, uh, but it's pretty pretty plainly obvious who the number one pitcher has been in fantasy this year. Mad Max. Max Scherzer, the guy. Number with, one movie in the box office and number one pitcher in fantasy. And he has one brown eye and one blue eye, and that's that's really all you need to know about Mad Max, except for you should own Mad Max. All right, so. Uh, we debated about the next... I, I guess I just maybe have a personal bias against this we, guy. We don't like Zach Greinke, like, on a fan base level. Like, we're, we were actually happy when Quentin... Carlos Quentin beat broke his up, yeah. uh, collarbone. Like, we thought that was hilarious. Exactly. Because, we're, again, we're NL West fans, so... So, we don't like him, but at the same time, looking at his numbers... You can't deny him. I mean, what, he's starting the he's All-Star starting, game today? Yeah, starting for the National League, so. And his numbers back it up, and regardless of our biases, like, we had to put him on our list, otherwise we're not doing our list right. Right. Now, all right, so let's throw another starter onto that list. Uh, Dallas Keuchel, um, again, the other starter for the uh, American League All-Stars. I didn't. I just, I guess, again, I, I'm, I like my strikeouts, and so when there's no strikeouts, I'm just like, eh, I don't know, it's got to be a mirage. See, I like my beards. Yes. So I'm all about Keiko. Like. Okay. He, he again was one of my dudes. I had him as a pickup last year, and so I, I kind of knew that he would carry that into this year. Not expecting that he'd be the American League starting pitcher for the All Star and one of our fantasy all-star picks, but I'm a big fan. Okay, see, my uh, my guy that I just, I love, 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 love is Garrett Cole. I mean, leads the uh, majors and wins, 13 wins right now. Um, I, I'm putting my money on him as the National League Cy Young winner. <clears throat> um, I just, I really like Garrett Cole. Really like Garrett Cole. Uh, how can you pick him above Mad Max for the Cy Young? I just feel like it's going to happen. He's got more wins and like wins I don't are know. an arbitrary stat. They I have don't nothing they to do with how good you pick. I think yeah, no, it's everything about else run is there. support. Everything else is there. I, the I get that, there. and Cole has been great, but like nobody is even coming close to what Mad Max is doing right now. All right, I'm just I'm still putting my vote on Garrett Cole. All right, so another pitcher, again, uh, Jacob DeGrom, New York Mets. Like, long flowing locks, great numbers. Like, the hair matches the numbers. Great hair, great numbers. Beautiful. Yes. I mean, really, you look at that in your your lineup every day, and you're like, I don't know what I like more, the hair or the, the numbers. Personally, I like the hair. See, I like the numbers, but... He, he's just missing the beard to go with the head, and then, like, he's my favorite player. That would be pretty... He would look something like Jesus, but like a blonde Mormon Jesus, you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. My my uh, my uh favorite pitcher, maybe ever, just because he's such a... No, he's not ever my favorite, but he's my second favorite pitcher ever, second favorite left-hander ever, to Randy Johnson. This of is course. Chris Sale. Uh... Like, just, wow, I'm in the K's. Wow, the K's. Again, I like my K's, so it's strikeout time when you got Chris Sale. And, 
I mean, if you have any of these starting pitchers on your roster, or if you have multiple, multiple, like, ooh, you probably have a nice pitching staff. Um, I, I couldn't argue with that. No. So hopefully you got some of these starters. Um, getting some Ks from Sale and some all-around I mean, goodness that from everybody else. That stretch of, you know, tying Pedro Martinez for... Double-digit Ks. Yeah, I mean, that was just ridiculous. And even the game that he had where he, I think he only ended up with like six Ks, but he still pitched a hell of a game. Right. So he's the opposite of Garrett Cole. No run support, no wins. Yeah. But he's got the Ks. He plays for the underperforming White Sox. That should be blowing everything up here pretty soon. Well, hopefully. We'll get a little trickle down here in Arizona. Maybe Chris Sale comes this way. Woo! I'd love that. Don't don't count on it. Probably not. But let's but, let's talk about a bullpen. Because you some... can't have an all-star team without a couple of closers. Yeah, you got to close this down. Uh, normally, see, I wanted to do three closers. But the starters have just been so good that... How do you leave one of those guys you, off? You, you don't. Like, I'm sorry, Chris Sell, you got to be on it. Right. Like, there's just no no leaving anybody off. So we just went with two closers. You might not Maybe win the category, yeah. but you'll be competitive. Um, anyways, our first pick uh, for our first closer is uh, Jarius Familia. Like, New York Mets came in... Uh, Filling in for steroid user and yeah, injury guy. Yeah, Mejia. Yeah. And, and honestly, for a waiver wire pickup who has just been lights out. He's been terrific. Give, didn't give the closer job back up. One of those things where like, hey, I took it. I peed on the mound. This is my, my job, my spot. My mound. I'm not giving it up. And... Fantasy owners are reaping the benefits. I, I'm one of these fantasy owners that reaps the benefit of uh, of owning uh, Familia personally because uh, like there's just so much so much goodness there. He's I think he's the only closer like ranked in the top 50 like overall. But I mean again, return for a pickup and you could get him in every league. Oh, wow, me, you got, like, the best closer in baseball. These Mets, with their pitching, always needing saves. So, I mean, it's been just boatloads of saves and good Ks and everything else to go along with it. Now, all right, so if you actually drafted a closer, one of the guys you probably were looking at, if you're a smart smart dude, somewhere around in the Rosenthal range. No? I think maybe Rosenthal. No, is a Rosenthal. Good... Oh, yes, okay, thank you. Rosenthal. So, Rosenthal... If you drafted Rosenthal, he was in the 100 range, probably, right? Top five closer, like maybe three, four, depending on Greg Holland. Okay. Well, he returned on investment there in that sense. Very good. I mean, he's still top 100, everything everything else. I mean, it's St. Louis, so lots of wins. They need closing. They need saves. And, you know, he's got the low ERA and the low whip to match. And, you know, what you want to... Anchor your, you know, pitching and staff. Both, yeah, both these guys have blown so few saves that, like, I mean, if you're able to combo the two of them, I mean, that's just been rock solid. And it's, let's face it, closing is one of those situations where there's no such thing as a guarantee or a rock solid. Even when you have Chapman, I mean, that seems like that's you got to pay for that right you got to pay for that guarantee so yeah i mean you do and you know obviously there's different strategies about you know drafting closers or not like i usually like to have at least one of the top closers you know i think i have a chapman or a kimbrell on or a jansen on all my teams okay and you know still going into the midway point i'd still take any one of those three above those two over Rosenthal and Familia? Yeah, I would. Okay. All right. Well, personally, I like the uh, the bargain bin. I like shopping. At, I like to be the waiver wire assassin. The pay less closers? Yes. Yes. You know, like, I got my Starberry shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, like, it... Because that allows you to pay for, you know, an extra bat or an extra you know, ace pitcher kind of thing. I, I kind of like that. But it's rare that it works out in such a successful fashion. 
Um, right, I mean, it could always go the way of Grilly, where, oh, yeah, I got great clothes, your pickup. Oh, done for the year. Yeah, that happened to me. Uh, it happened to a lot of managers. Sorry, guys. So, anyways, enough about closers, because who cares? They're closers. Right, they just get chewed up, anyways. Just... Anyways, this is our fantasy sports fantasy all star team. Right. Uh, let us know what you think if we missed the ball on one of these. Uh, we obviously disagree. Right. We have a few disagreements. Uh, there, I mean, again, there's some close guys, some tough guys that we had to leave off. And I guarantee if we actually put in a bench, like the people that you're clamoring about that we miss would have been on our bench. Most likely, yeah. That Keep that in mind. So, um yeah, and it wasn't too bad, I think. I, you know, it's been a fun first half of the season. I'm looking forward to the second half. Absolutely. Like, it's going to be fun in the Dynasty Leagues, man. Always I mean, fun. Like, again, if you haven't played in a Dynasty League, like, do yourself a favor and find one because you get so much more investment and joy out of it. Like, I mean, it's so much better. I love Dynasty Leagues. If you're in a really good league, too, like, it's very frequent that – people are just talking year round. So you meet these guys like, oh, I barely know this dude. And you, you work a trade with them or something like that. And all of a sudden, now you're talking to the guy in the off season. Like, well, I can't wait for baseball to come back around. And literally like most of our baseball leagues, that's how these fans are. Like they don't want to play other sports. They don't want to play hockey or hoops or football even. Like, that, nope, just baseball for me. They're not quite as addicted as we are. No, but they are at least as baseball addicted as we Absolutely. are. Absolutely. And so, that, again, that's why they're in these leagues with us. But, you know, it's it's fun to have a league. It's fun to have people that you can, you know, like, maybe not necessarily make that trade with, but discuss. What are we going to do next year? What could we do? Like, ah, I want to, you know, you always got that Cubs fan who wants to try to pry Jorge Soler off you. <laughs> you know? So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Dynasty Leagues. and. Enjoy the rest of the, the season, everybody. Get Enjoy ready for football. Enjoy the All-Star game, you know. Yeah, we're getting ready for football. We're getting ready for basketball a little bit later than that. So it's we're going to have a busy uh, busy fall, I think. Yeah, this is the, the quiet before the storm. Yeah, sorry for all the list videos and pods and all that stuff. But, yeah, it's what, that's what July's for. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we wrap up? We'll close with the fantasy sports prayer. Serenity Absolutely. prayer. Uh, can I start? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Fantasy Gods. Fantasy Gods. Please grant me the serenity to set my ideal lineup, the courage to add drop aggressively, and the wisdom, as always, to make good trades. Hey, motherfucking men. Amen. All right, so check us out. Check out our website, fantasysportsaddicts.com. Also, Twitter, we're at letter F, letter S, the word double, letter A, at FS double A. We'll be happy to chat with you anytime. And also don't forget, we're working on the change.org petition. You can find a link to it on the website or through YouTube or anywhere else that we're on. Uh, change.org, we want to legalize paid fantasy sports, daily fantasy sports in the state of Arizona. We are one of only five states where it's not legal. So, so please just take a minute, track down where this petition is, and, Follow and the sign internet. it. Sign it. Like, let thing. us play daily fantasy sports leagues because I want to win a shipload of money. I'd be happy with a boatload. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Later. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball.